in this video hair balloon and can are the objects considered now balloon is rubbed against hair and it is brought near the pepsi can now you will see that this balloon is able to attract the pepsi can we discussed earlier that this is because of the development of charges on the balloon now how do you think the balloon is able to get these charges even in the case of balloon fur and paper we found that when balloon was rubbed with fur and brought near the bits of paper the paper were attracted to the balloon now what do you think is happening we saw that a very ordinary balloon was able to get charged now how do you think they are getting charged how do you think the balloon is getting charged now before we answer that question let us look at the fundamental unit of matter if we were to zoom down to the balloon absolutely at the molecular level we would find that the fundamental unit of matter is an atom that's right an atom is the stable and most fundamental unit of matter now what is an atom consists of an atom consists of a nucleus which contains protons and neutrons now neutrons are neutral particles and protons are positively charged particles and this is why the nucleus is a positively charged region and as you can see in different shells around the nucleus electrons revolve around the nucleus and these electrons are negatively charged particles now experimentally it has been found out that the charge on one electron is minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs minus because as we said that the electron is a negatively charged particle and the charge on a proton has been experimentally found out to be plus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs this is because the proton is a positively charged particle here the unit of charge is coulomb represented by c now it has also been experimentally found out that the number of electrons in an atom is always equal to the number of protons this is why an atom is a stable unit because the number of electrons are equal to the number of protons now we have also seen that the charge on an electron the charge on an electron and the charge on a proton are the same and we also find that the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons so can you tell me what this means equal number of positive charges will obviously cancel out an equal number of negative charges that is a given number of electrons if they are equal to a given number of protons since the charges on them are equal they will cancel out so overall the atom is neutral because the positive charges and the negative charges are cancelling one another out so we can say that the atom is electrically neutral because the charges have been cancelled out now consider this animation in this animation you will find that there are certain electrons which are close to the nucleus and certain electrons that are far away from the nucleus now we have discussed previously that unlike charges attract one another i just mentioned that the nucleus is positively charged and the electrons are negatively charged so obviously there is a force of attraction between the nucleus and the electrons now this force of attraction is more for electrons that are closer to the nucleus and less for electrons that are far away from the nucleus because if you recall from our previous discussion we have studied that the force in between charged objects or the electrostatic force depends on distance if the distance is more the force is less and if the distance is less the force is more so here we have considered the nucleus that is positively charged and the electrons that are negatively charged so in the outermost shell of this atom we have an electron this electron is very loosely held why because the distance between the nucleus and this electron is quite a lot and it is definitely more than the distance of say this electron from the nucleus so since this distance is a very long distance it is loosely held 
and such an electron is known as a valence or a free electron it is also known as a free electron now let us find out what happens when balloon is rubbed with hair the balloon contains positive and negative charges and the hair also contains positive and negative charges now to begin with these bodies hair and balloon will con contain an equal number of positive and negative charges now it is very important to remember that every body is hungry for electrons even in this case the hair wants electrons and the balloon wants electrons but the balloon is greedier than the hair so what the balloon does is once hair is being rubbed against it it takes away certain electrons from hair as you can see when hair is being rubbed against balloon the balloon is accepting electrons from hair as a result a deficiency of electrons is arising in hair and an excess of electrons is getting inside the balloon due to this reason the balloon is getting charged and since there is an excess of negative charges it is getting negatively charged after rubbing with hair as you can see the balloon is getting charged due to rubbing and the electrons are getting transferred from hair to the balloon so how can we explain this in terms of the atoms now let us consider two neutral atoms in the beginning they have an equal number of protons and electrons that is the first atom contains an equal number of protons and electrons and the second atom contains an equal number of protons and electrons within their cells now what is happening is one electron is getting transferred from the first atom to the second atom so as a result what is happening this atom is getting or having a deficiency of electrons because it is giving away one electron and this atom is developing one extra electron or in other words it is accepting one electron that is one negative charge so since this now has a deficiency of electrons it gets positively charged and this because it has an excess of electrons gets negatively charged after the transfer of electrons so when one body is rubbed with another this has a scientific term to it that scientific term is triboelectricity so what is triboelectricity materials that become electrically charged after they come into frictive contact with another material the word frictive means direct contact or rubbing that is when one body is rubbed against another let's say a glass rod is rubbed with silk or balloon is rubbed with hair that sort of contact is known as frictive contact and it is due to this frictive contact that these materials get charged so that kind of electricity is known as triboelectricity due to which these bodies acquire charges after rubbing we will now learn about a very important concept this concept is of the conservation of charges now what do you think the conservation of charges states to illustrate this concept we have considered an example in this example we have used two boxes with a given number of red balls and blue balls now notice in box a and b there are five red balls and five blue balls even in this case there are five red balls and five blue balls now if these red and blue balls are considered analogous to negative and positive charges what do you think will happen let us say that red denotes positive and blue denotes negative now what we do is we keep transferring these balls from one box to another and from this box again to the next box now if you observe closely there are a total of 20 balls if we include both the boxes now after these transfer operations let us find what happens now at first three red balls and one blue ball are brought from b to a then 
two blue balls and one red ball is taken from A to B. Then again, one blue ball is brought from B to A. And after that, two red balls are taken from A to B. And you will find we have five each in each box of red and blue. That is, we get back the original state. Now you will observe that in each of these transactions, the total number of balls, including the two boxes, is remaining the same. That is equal to 20. No matter how many red balls and blue balls we exchange in between these two boxes, the total number of balls remains the same. And in this case, we even get back the original state. So what can we say? We can derive the same analogy in case of charges. And we can say that charges are conserved. That is, in any transaction of charges in between two bodies, where a body gives away electrons, or it accepts electrons, charges remain conserved. That is the total number of negative and positive charges, both bodies combined, remains the same. So what does this state? This states, that is the conservation of charges, states that charges can neither be created nor be destroyed. They are always conserved in a particular transaction of charges between one body to another. Just like you can see in the case of these boxes that the number of blue balls and red balls is being conserved even when the transactions are taking place with different number of balls from A to B. Now I have a question for you. The question is why don't we human beings exert electrical force on other bodies? And the options are it is because we carry no charge. We carry charges, but in such a way that they cancel out each other's effect. Or how can a person exert electrical forces? Because we studied only atoms do that. So what do you think is the correct answer? The correct answer is we carry charges, but in such a way that they cancel out each other's effect. It is important to know that every being and every object on this planet has charges associated with it or with them. But the charges are present in such a way that they are not evident. They cancel out each other's effect. And this is the reason why we don't exert electrical force on other bodies normally. I have another question for you. In this question, a statement has been said. The statement is, all bodies have mass. So similarly, all bodies have charge. Now, do you think the statement is true or false? The statement is false. Now, just because all bodies have mass doesn't mean all bodies have to have charge. Having a charge means being positively charged or negatively charged. Now, if we were negatively charged or positively charged under normal circumstances, we would be attracting everything around us. Since such is not the case, this statement is clearly false. Now, it is again important to remember a very important concept. The concept is charge is quantized. Not clear what quantized means? Well, let us find out. We have studied that the charge on an electron is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. That is, the magnitude of the charge is this. For an electron, it has a negative. For a proton, it has a positive. So this is one electronic charge or one unit charge in case of electricity. Now we have seen that whenever two bodies were rubbed against one another, or whenever there was a transfer of charges, a fixed number of electrons were transferred from one body to another. Now this fixed number of electrons that are getting transferred can be depicted as Ne, where N is an integer. So what does this depict? This depicts that when charges are being transferred, it is always transferred as an integral multiple of one electronic charge. Always remember that charges are never transferred in fractions. They are always transferred in integral multiples, that is, in whole numbers of one electronic charge. This concept is known as quantization of charge.
This is known as quantization of charge. So taking a quick recap, what did we learn? We just learned that charges are always quantized. Even when they are transferred from one body to another, they do so in whole numbers. We also learned that the fundamental unit of matter is an atom which consists of positively charged protons and negatively charged electrons. And since they are equal in number, and also because the charges on electrons and protons are the same, that is, one electron has the same charge as that of one proton, and also because they are unlike each other, the charge on an electron is negative, and the charge on a proton is positive, an atom is electrically neutral. Because the charges are same, they are unlike one another, and the number of electrons and protons are equal. We also saw that when two bodies are rubbed against one another, there was a certain transfer of electrons taking place. Now this transfer of electrons is taking place when two bodies are rubbed. We saw in the case of atoms that there are certain electrons that are very loosely held by the atoms. It is these electrons that are transferred when two bodies are rubbed. We also learned that due to this, the charges are not getting created or destroyed. The charges are simply moving from one body to another. In the total operation, the total number of charges is remaining the same. This concept is known as the conservation of charge. And we illustrated the same using a number of blue and red balls and two boxes. And we showed that no matter what transaction is carried out in between A and B, with the blue and red balls, the total number of blue and red balls remains the same. And similar is the case when we consider charges, the total number of charges remains the same or is conserved. 